Coalition. And today she's going to address the leading health concerns in Sheboygan County and collaborative community efforts to help Sheboygan County residents live better and longer. Second will be Tammy Flora. Uh, Tammy is Vice President of Human Resources at Bastards Gallery, who you re may remember from the gala was the manufacturer of the year for 2012. Um, she has a Bachelor's of Science in Business Administration, Human Resource Management from the University of Wisconsin Platteville and is SPHR certified. She joined Masters Gallery in 1996 when the company was just starting to grow with 120 employees. Um, and as I mentioned, they were just recently recognized as the Manufacturer of the Year and they currently employ 430 employees. The third speaker will be uh, Vicki uh, uh, Butson, and Vicki is employed at Kurt Joa, where her title is Benefits and Wellness Coordinator, and she has held her certification as a professional in human resources since 2004, and is proud to be on the faculty status with the Wellness Council of America. Uh, she is living proof that wellness works over time because she can now tolerate and even enjoy eating some vegetables without having the urge to vomit, so. I wasn't gonna say the word, but I couldn't think of a different one to say, so. Yeah. I couldn't either. <laughs> and last but not least is uh, Kelly Belt, and Kelly is a health and wellness sales representative at Prevea Health, who happens to be, be our sponsor, has been for the last couple of years, and is again this year, thanks to Prevea. Uh, for the past two years, she has worked with local companies in identifying, implementing, and evaluating health and wellness initiatives. So with that, I think I'll turn it over uh, to um, Jean to start, and then maybe you may all think about your own wellness experiences at your uh, places of employment, and maybe we can even share some of those during the question and answer uh, portion. So with that, Jean. Thanks, Dave, and I hope everyone enjoyed the green beans. I thought they were delicious. <laughs> I, um, I'm very excited today to share information about Healthy Sheboygan County. And before I start, I just would like to see a show of hands of how many have heard about Healthy Sheboygan C County Coalition. The numbers are increasing. That's a good thing. And after today, hopefully you'll share this with family and friends because I think our health is central to our life. And I'm gonna see if I can make this work together. So essentially, we're working together to build a healthier community. The Healthy Sheboygan County Coalition actually is a blend of healthcare providers, public health um, leaders in the community, businesses, schools, community members, faith community, looking at how we can collaboratively work to improve the health of Sheboygan County. We want everyone to be living better, longer. So again, community-based, collaborative initiatives. Um, as a nation, we all know that we can do better. Um, the United States spends more on medical care and medical research than any other country. And our longevity, we live the 40th. We have the highest, 40th highest longevity rate. So about the average person born today will probably live to be about 78 years of age. But we also know that if our current rates of obesity continue, that it's likely we will start to see a decrease in our longevity. This, this particular slide, I think, is really important because often when we think about health, we think about our relationship with our medical provider, which is very important. But if we really want to have an impact on the lives of people, we need to think about what really contributes to their wellness or their health. And it, what the slide essentially shows is that if we were to um, decrease the rate of premature death, 40% could be positively affected by changing behaviors. So essentially, if we, if we lose our you know, over, change from being overweight or obese or stop smoking, that will have a bigger impact than the medical care that you can obtain at any health care provider. It takes the whole circle, though. And I think it's important for us to recognize that. As a local health department, we're charged to do a community health assessment at least every three to five years. Back in 2010, we put together a community health assessment, and today I'm going to share some of that data. 
Back in June of 2011, we actually shared this with community members and determined um, what we felt were the leading areas that as a healthy Sheboygan County Coalition we needed to address and work together on. And the data that's following will demonstrate what we, we came up with. We identified that the five leading causes of health concern in Sheboygan County were dental access, mental health issues, health literacy, alcohol, tobacco, and drugs, and physical activity, obesity, and nutrition. In terms of some of the health data related to these issues, um, oral health is an issue that many of us that are able to see a dentist on a regular basis don't even think about. But when we looked at our data and looked at medical assistance um, usage among individuals that in seeing their dentist, um, we have about 18,000 individuals in Sheboygan County that are currently enrolled in Medicaid. And at that time, in 2008, only about 20% had regular dental care. Um, at that point in time, and in 2011 when we met, there were no dentists in Sheboygan County accepting new medical assistance patients. So access to care was a, a significant problem. And at that time, we, we just did a one-year retrospective study of how many individuals went to the emergency rooms and area hospitals for dental care, and there were 379 that were seeking dental care in the emergency rooms. We know that's not the most cost-effective way. Later in my presentation, I'll tell you about some exciting updates. Mental health is also a concern in Sheboygan County. Access to psychiatric care is especially problematic for children with psychiatric or behavioral um, issues, as well as for those individuals who have medical assistance or who have no health insurance. Local suicide rates exceed the state and the national rate. And when we looked at, um, Aurora had done, or excuse me, this is county health DAG rankings. Um, we had a higher rate of individuals who reported they had poor mental health days than in other places in the country. One area that kind of surprised me when I went into the June Call to Action Forum, I didn't expect that health literacy would hit the radar screen in our community, but really those in attendance felt that that was a leading problem in many of our health care um, facilities and, and amongst our Sheboygan County residents, really knowing how to effectively navigate the health care system and to understand what, what an, or how important their role is in actually making health choices and health decisions. The next um, area of concern was alcohol and drugs, and we know that um, Sheboygan County is 29th, uh, or 29 percent of Sheboygan County adults report excessive or binge drinking. That's probably not a surprise. We know that our operating while intoxicated rates are higher than Wisconsin average. We also know that there uh, our number of motor vehicle accidents associated with drinking is higher than average and that we are seeing an increase in alcohol and drug-related hospitalizations. We know in terms of tobacco, an estimated 20,000 Sheboygan County residents are smokers, adults. We also know that um, those rates exceed state and national numbers, and that 17.5% um, of Sheboygan County high school students smoke. We also know that in terms of activity and nutrition, and Kelly's going to be talking more about that later, that um, some survey results show that overweight and obesity in Sheboygan County is of concern. A recent Aurora survey indicates that 61% of those who responded um, consumed two or more servings of fruit per day, and that actually went down from um, 2011 when we looked back at 2008 data and that 23% consume three or more servings of vegetables, and that only 51% of Sheboygan County residents um, exercise according to the CDC guidelines. So just real quickly, I'm gonna just breeze through a few more things. Um, as a result of that call to action, our Healthy Coalition, Healthy Sheboygan County, put together a community action plan, and that's available on our website. I have some magnets out by the door that you can take along to take a look at that, and I think that there will be some key um, action steps that you may be able to apply at your workplace. Um, the dental access or another um, significant um, change in our community is now we have a Lakeshore Community Health Center. 
which is actually um, HRSA funded, federal um, funding, that Healthy Sheboygan County with other community partners wrote for a grant and were funded. We now have a clinic on North A Street, and many of you have probably seen the building um, where Dr. Kellner had been previously, providing dental services, medical services, and behavioral health services to show at need to Boyden County residents. The Mental Health Committee is really trying to increase the awareness in the community of mental health as an issue and um, to remove the stigma. They certainly are getting information out about suicide prevention and crisis cards, and I have some of those here as well. That's something that th they've also worked on is it's the drug drop-offs. Our local sheriffs or our local police departments have been very good in terms of having a safe drop-off for, for medications so that they don't get in the hands of others or are inappropriately used. The Health Literacy Committee, we've surveyed 1,000 Sheboygan County residents as well as health care providers, and we're in the process of putting together a community action plan, which we hope to unveil in October of this year to really help folks better navigate the health care system. And we'd welcome any of your participation and what makes sense in your work site. Um. Alcohol and, and the AODA committee has really done a lot in terms of trying to change the social norm associated with alcohol and drug use in Sheboygan County, really working with the schools on Life of an Athlete program and other evidence-based programs to hopefully reduce the incidence of alcohol and drug abuse, tobacco use in Sheboygan County. Education is key to that. We're also working with our area healthcare providers to make sure that they're using evidence-based screening tools that can identify individuals early so they can get appropriate treatment that they need. Um, I'm going to defer probably to Kelly on the SCAN committee. She's got exciting news to share there. And I just have a couple additional points that I really, these are the take home messages that I'd like you to go with today. As a society, we need to stop thinking of health as something obtained in hospitals and doctor's offices but instead as something that starts in families, schools, workplaces, playgrounds, and parks, and in the air we breathe and the water we drink. It's time to think, or to, that we expand the way we think about health to include how to keep it, not just how to get it back. And I guess this is my plug. Um, we really need you. We need you to be aware of the community health plan. Try to implement as much as you can in your work site, in your homes, in your schools, in your families. We um, join a committee. We have several committees. Our website, I think, provides a lot of information. I'd be happy to talk with you more about the opportunities. And um, please feel free to contact us. Only together will we all work effectively to live longer and better. Thanks. And I'm going to do my best to not hit my head on one or the other. So I'll try to stay well while I'm up here. So I'm Tammy Flora. I work with Masters Gallery Foods in Plymouth. And um, I had been asked by John Rogers to come today to talk about a creative way that we decided we were going to take control of our own destiny as it related to our health insurance of our employees. Um, and we consider the Center for Health and Wellness an investment in the health of our employees. And we've uh, started it in July of 2007. Um, I have my own little clicker here, so. There we go. All right, so our current uh, business partners, basically what it is is it's a consortium of a bunch of different companies in the Plymouth area that have come together to offer health and wellness services for their employees. So it includes Masters Gallery Foods, uh, in Plymouth Foam. We were the two grandfathered companies that started the center. and also includes PTX Services, which formerly was BSV Logistics, is, and it's the sister company to Plymouth Foam that provides all of their trucking. So they're a very small company, but that's how they joined the consortium. And then our most recent additions, Van Horn Automotive Group and the City of Plymouth. So I'm proud to say we do have a public employer in the group. So for those of you who might work for a public entity, it is possible. Um, as far as the services that are available at our center, 
There was a side. Like the mirror. On the side of the... Why don't you come show me? <laughs> oh, this right here? This, this side? side? Here was okay. This, yeah, I think I'm not. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I apologize because it looked much bigger on my screen. So <laughs> for those of you in the back of the room, um, the services that are available at the center, it's basically a doctor's office. And right now our employees have access to a nurse practitioner, a physical therapist, a chiropractor, that was our most recent addition, a health coach, a dietitian, and there's full laboratory and full radiology at our facility. Um, we are very lucky because what we do is we lease space from Prevea. Um, Prevea just built a beautiful new facility on the corner of 23 and 57 in Plymouth, and uh, they built it large, and uh, that was good for us. So uh, we were able to uh, secure a leased area of that building. So we have full access to their radiology and laboratory, so um, the best of both worlds. And then we also have the ability, they have an urgent care at that facility. And on the days that our center is not open, our employees can use the urgent care. We call that wraparound care. And they've uh, negotiated a nice urgent care rate with us. So we pay that for our employees when they go there. Um, and then the employees don't have to go to the emergency room on uh, those days. So that's a good thing for us. Um, as far as the business reasons uh, for why we all got together and decided that this was what we needed to do, um, all of these companies that are listed are not large enough, quite honestly, to probably do this financially on their own um, and make a go of it and have enough utilization. So the business reasons were common between all of the companies. Um, and it, for those of you who are business owners and work for businesses, these are all gonna be pretty clear reasons. But the first being to improve the productivity of our employees, to improve the overall mental, emotional, and physical health of our employees and dependents through the use of preventative medicine, wellness programming, and education, to control absenteeism and promote presenteeism, which we want them there at work, and to collectively reduce healthcare costs for the employer and as well for the employee, because this saves them a lot of money as well. And to maximize the economies of scale and share the fixed costs that the center um, has, and that would be the real estate, the lease, the staff, and the equipment. So we all share those fixed costs across all of these companies. And then the next would be to control workers' compensation claim costs and reduce disability claims. Uh, it provides a convenient access to care for our employees and their dependents. We encourage employees who might otherwise not seek treatment to seek medical attention because it's, it's available and it's there and it's free. Um, we, we've been able to reduce lost time and time on work restrictions and preventing occupational injury and illness from occurring in the first place. And it has really helped from a recruitment and retainment standpoint um, from uh, our workforce. We hear all the time get thank yous all the time, people coming to my door telling me how thankful they are that the company has done this for them. As far as the bottom line savings, um, we do work with Purveya. Um, they are our contracted service provider. So basically all of the staff that work at the center are Purveya employees. So we have no liability in that, no malpractice insurance or anything, that's all Purveya. And they offer us contracted rates, so we save a lot of money over the traditional healthcare model by doing that. We keep our people at work and healthy by doing this, which is a definite goal, of, I'm sure, of all of yours. Um, we have been able to control our healthcare spend, and, and I'm gonna give you some numbers, but these are only Masters Gallery Foods numbers, so I'm only speaking to our company's experience. But Masters Gallery has seen only a 9% overall plan increase in the past five years. So for those of you who have health insurance for your employees, you know that 9% in one year is good. Ours has been 9% in total over five years. So we've been doing this since 2007. So I was asked earlier if um, our experience is proving that this is working, and I think that's probably a pretty good statistic to share. Uh, we have much lower employer turnover rates. We, we didn't have a high turnover rate, but we just don't see as many people voluntarily deciding to leave the organization. Uh, lower accident rates and workers' comp claims, and a much uh, improved employee morale and commitment to our organization. All right, here's the good stuff. <laughs> um, so these are the actual costs 
per employee for us to have this facility. And again, this is just Masters Gallery Foods, so our cost. Um, so I started from the 2007 when we started and opened the facility. The average employee count is our Masters Gallery only. And then what it cost us per employee to do this. That number is a year per employee for a year. And then up as it, as it goes up, and I've made some notes on 2008, um, that was when we actually had to do a build out in the space that we were leasing. It wasn't big enough, it started to grow too fast, so you'll see a jump in our expenses in 2008. Um, then I had made some notes on the 2011 number. That was the year that Van Horn and City of Plymouth joined us. And um, obviously then you start to see that per employee number coming down because that's spreading out more of those fixed costs. And it also was the year that we moved to the Provea location. And um, I can't speak enough to how, uh, how great that was for the group to be able to do that and have full access to all of those facilities in a brand new building. And, and we were just really fortunate that that worked out at that time. We had outgrown our previous location, which was downtown in Plymouth. Um, in a former retail spot that we made into a doctor's office. We outgrew it and started looking, and fortunately, Prevea had just finished building our new center for us, so it worked out good. <laughs> um, and then 2012, the $180,000 number, um, we did add health coaching, the chiropractor, and, and an extra physical therapist that in 2012. So $450 a year per employee is what it costs us because of that ability for us to spread that out amongst the companies. And then the next number I wanted to share with you is the workers' comp um, to show you that it's, it's working. Um, 2007 at the bottom up to the current, our um, workers' comp year ends uh, at the end of June. Um, you'll see our mod rate. Um, for those of you who do workers' comp for your company, the lower the number below one, the better. Um, so our mod rate has, has gone down. Um, it did jump a little bit in the last year, but they always use the previous three years of claims. Um, but I did make a note after talking with our broker a little bit, I wanted to be able to um, support the numbers that were up here. I included the number of claims that are in these numbers and then uh, gave you a percentage of how many claims per employee. You see how that has progressively gone down. We have progressively grown our workforce from 223 in 07 to the 428 that we are today. So it obviously is paying off for us. Um, some added perks, um, I just wanted to mention, Purvea, by partnering with Purvea, we've been able to really expand the wellness programming that we did before this even started. So we have um, some, uh, we call them get fit classes that they offer for us um, at the facility. We have a, a, it's like a boot camp for those of you who work out. Um, that has been really successful. We're in our fifth 12 week program of that with 38 participants. Um, they do lunch and learns for us. Um, they do all of our health risk appraisals. We do a full biometric health risk appraisal, and we do those all at our center so that they can do all of the um, blood draws and come up with all of the laboratory numbers for us. Um, they do our flu shot clinics, uh, wellness fairs, all, all different types of wellness programming, which I'm sure several of you have already seen that Purvea can offer. And they also have um, those Purvea Well Said series, which um, are really well received by our employees as well. I just put a testimonial in here. Um, this is one of our employees, and I have to laugh because it kind of even looks like him a little bit. Um, but and Michelle, um, who's with me today, she, well, Michelle Galloway, I'd like to just point her out because she's my kind of cheerleader about our wellness program. Um, so she does all of my wellness programming for me. So um, she's been a, a huge advantage for me to continue to grow this. But this is just a, an example of what one employee has been able to do. He's a 44-year-old male employee, and before he started working out, you can see his weight, and I probably brought my cheaters, um, his weight is, was 232 pounds, total cholesterol 231, triglycerides 273, HDL 46, LDL 147, that's the lousy one, that's not good, uh, resting pulse 65, blood pressure 145 over 80, he was on medication. Then he went through our uh, Get Fit program, and after the Get Fit program, he was down to 218. His total cholesterol had dropped 
to 158. Triglycerides were down to 140. HDL was at 43. LDL was at 84. Uh, resting pulse 48 and blood pressure 107 over 68. And he today, this, this was um, probably six months ago, I would say, he continues to do a full intense workout. He does this insanity program, for those of you who know insanity. So he went from doing nothing to doing the insanity program every day of the week, which is wonderful. So we've changed his lifestyle, and we've changed a lot of people's lifestyles by the things that we're doing at Masters and we're promoting with them. Um, so I just I want to be able to tell you guys that we were a small company who kind of took a leap of faith that this appeared to be a good idea and we we were going to try to take control of our own destiny as it relates to healthcare, um, and it's proving to have paid off for us. So for those of you who are from small companies, don't walk away going, well, there's no way we could do this. We're too small. If you have enough folks in the area that would be willing to gather together and kind of join forces, it is possible. Um, and a, a little birdie tells me that there are some local Sheboygan companies that are very close to having this be uh, come to fruition for them too. So it is a possibility. So go ahead. Hopefully you can hear me. I've got a cold and my voice is a couple octaves lower than it. Uh, we have a comedian. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, I don't speak professionally very often, so I'll do my best here. Um, you've heard some of this before. Can you see these slides? Okay. It takes courage and commitment for a business to make employee health a strategic initiative. A small percentage of our insured population can generate a disproportionate share of medical claims costs for the employer. However, our, our culture of health goes beyond improving the health of the 20% of our at-risk employees. It is equally important to engage the 80% of the healthy employees to ensure that they stay healthy. When done right, wellness programs create healthy activities to meet the unique needs of the individual. They foster personal accountability and empower employees to achieve their personal health goals. After all, healthy employees drive down claims costs. Thus dawns the understanding that we must engage our employees in behavior that ensures good health. Corporate wellness was born out of this realization. There is much to do in the wellness arena. You cannot do it alone. Ask for help. I'm going to give you as much information as time will allow. My main topic is vitality, and it may not be the perfect match for your company, but I encourage you to watch for a few helpful nuggets of insight that you might find along the way of my presentation. <clears throat> My employer is Kurt G. Joe Incorporated, one of the world's leading manufacturers of custom machi machinery. We've been in business for 80 years and currently have 400 plus employees that are skilled, which include electrical and mechanical engineers and assemblers, machinists, technicians, financial, sales, and administrative staff. We work two shifts, six days a week, with varying start times within each department, Plus, we have a weekend shift. 88% are men and 12% are women. The average age is about 43, which includes part-timers, two of which are in their 80s. Of the 300, 387 full-time employees, 358 are enrolled in our medical plan. 259 are family coverage and 99 are single plan coverage for a total of 1,112 bodies that we have covered under our medical plan. While we want all of our employees to be healthy, we have that special interest in the medical claims of those that are, are insured employees and their, their families. Thus our wellness committee, like your companies, have its work cut out for them. The cornerstone of our wellness program is our two-part health risk assessment. 
Part one consists of the blood draw and the biometrics, and part two is the results and the coaching sessions. Our 98% participation rate is a direct result of a 50% discount incentives in the medical premium offered to those who participate in the health risk assessment. Oh, this is not going to show up very well. I, I apologize. Um, it's the slide that shows all the different activities that we have going on in our wellness plan. <clears throat> JOA's Benefits and Wellness Committee uses the health risk assessment results to recommend plan design changes and to establish <coughs> ongoing programs that are listed here. Um, our wellness committee has been slowly evolving the culture over seven years now. Um, some of the programs are now part of the life at JOA. Others, like Prevea's Get Fit exercise class, are new and set to begin in March. So we create new programs and we discard those that no longer fill a need. It's a constant movement, movement responding to the need of the employee as we create new behavior changes. But there's no standard definition of who will participate at any given time to any particular program. There's just a few small, precious few that are thrilled and overjoyed at any given launch. So in fact, reaching um, 70 to 80% rate of participation is the gold standard that we try to achieve, but it's virtually impossible to attain. So we try to create programs with and for our employees and not to them. This encourages regular participation and the folks are happy with the wellness program, which brings me to the main focus of my talk. Back in 2010, JOA's Benefits Committee realized that we needed to, more, to do more to engage our employees in the healthy choices. We were doing fine in our health risk assessments by lowering our risks slightly each year, um, but we were starting to plateau. And we were also concerned about the number of claim costs for our spouses and our family members, the children. So we turned to our broker and our third party administrator and we asked them for ideas. And after much thought and analysis, we committed to Humana's Vitality Program for three years. The three-step approach. It starts with an interactive website that takes your health risk assessment results and it creates a personal health assessment pathway tailored for every member, for the employee for, and for the spouse, anyone 18 years and older. And then as you improve your health through online tracking and interactive mini courses offered on the website, you attain goals and you earn rewards. And the employee gets rewarded for exercising, losing weight, um, stopping smoking, and more. The big selling points for us were that while some employees within Kurjoa weren't comfortable participating in the work setting, Vitality allows the employee to independently set goals and meet them at work um, or when and where they wanted to. And also, the whole family can have fun earning vitality points by participating in activities. It could be after school through rec department or, or school activities, softball programs. Um, and then they can also have fun shopping at the Vitality um, online mall. So this is the interactive personal website that they see when they're on uh, Vitality. It starts with this website that promotes engagement. It features a Vitality age um, that is, again, uh, represented by your health risk assessment age uh, results. Um, and it shows a point status. Over there, there's a 500 points that this person has earned so far, and, um, and more. And then the next, and here it says there's a goal that was set and it's encouraging them, saying um, this is something, I think they're biking and walking, and they have 28 more days to go for that. And the last thing they earn, recent points, um, they just earn 10 points for doing something. 
So it's uh, whenever you go on there, they're encouraging you, and there's um, multi um, layers on this website. Uh oh. Okay. So Humana Vitality provides broad incentives for more than 30 activities. It's not just based on fitness, but also on education, uh, prevention, and healthy living. So for instance, um, I have some things listed in yellow. I'm just going to get down here so I can see. Um, Terrific Tuesdays is something that we have Purveya coming in for. Um, they do a lot of talks uh, during our lunch hour, and all the participants, if they um, go to about 90% of them, we get vitality points for that. Uh, Helix is our health risk assessments. They get a bunch of points for having that done. Vaxpro is our uh, flu shots. Uh, weight Watchers, we have on-site Weight Watchers programs. If our folks didn't do so well in Helix, and then they, uh, in our health risk assessments, and then they end up losing weight during the year, well, they get points then. They don't have to wait till the next year to get points on this vitality. And then we do have the blood center of southeastern Wisconsin coming three times a year. And if you do that, you get points for that. So there are a lot of activities. And then probably the exercise um, classes. And we have our um, golf league. We're, at, we're fortunate enough to have a golf course on our site. And I just found out that um, our, golf cor our golf league players are going to get vitality points for that this year. So that's if they don't drink beer on the course. <laughs> so anyway. So let me see if I can continue here. So this is the last slide on that part of it. So members start earning points immediately as soon as they engage in vitality. And there's five different statuses. The more points they earn, they move into another status level. And the further along the status level they go, the cheaper the products are on the virtual website. So there's this financial uh, benefit for them. There's this little stimulus for them. We've had folks, we found out that, that um, last year uh, one fellow, he bought a lawnmower. We have other people that bought bikes. A uh, girl in our, in our human resources office bought a designer handbag. Um, I didn't even know they were out there. Um, iTunes cards, uh, Amazon gift cards, flat screen TVs, just depends. So some people are savers, so they are going to get that flat screen TV. Other people are spenders, they want that immediate you know, reward so they get the, uh, the, the, um, um, the, uh, the iTunes cards, you know, or the movie passes, or the two for one dinner. You know, it's, it all depends, it's all up to you. It's all individualized. So it's a lot of fun, they're having fun with this. Um, our current program fit well with Vitality. It was a really good match. And after a year, it's becoming part of our culture. Currently, about 50% of our insured um, folks are, are um, engaged. Many of our employees are wearing pedometers. I have a pedometer on right now. We're wearing them all the time. <laughs> We're wearing them all the time. Um, we, are, we wear them on a daily basis. A year ago, before Vitality partnered with Joa, maybe a handful of people wore them. But um, just our, our wellness committee, we sold 250 pedometers already. So um, they're sell, you know, we sell them, we sell them for half price. We buy them through Humana, and then we sell them half price. It's happening. People do it. Habits change. Vitality has helped pull some of the pieces that we didn't that weren't quite working. It pulled it together and it's beginning to catch fire. Once this January's health risk assessment numbers get loaded onto Vitality, the talk around the water coolers is going to start again and people are going to start asking, hey Greg, what's your Vitality age? You know? <laughs> As I recently heard a local healthcare professional, Prevea, proclaim, high deductibles don't keep claim costs down healthy people do. Joa is continually working on our culture of wellness and it's a win-win. Vitality may just be just what you need. It's working for us at Joa. There are a lot of resources for you to tap. The granddaddy is 
WELCOA, the Wellness Council of America, which is the premier leader in wellness. Its website is filled with tools, educational webinars, flyers, resources, you name it. The state chapter, chapter has an annual conference that is not to be missed. You don't have to be a member to attend. Locally, I'd recommend attending Prevea's bi-monthly wellness meetings held at Black Wolf Run for support, for inspiration from other local businesses. Our next speaker can give you more information on that terrific opportunity. Thank you. Perhaps some of you received an email from the Sheboygan Chamber who helped us facilitate a survey last year. Um, the purpose of the survey really was to identify what are some current activities that the business community is doing locally um, in the way of health and wellness in the workplace. And then we wanted to also identify what are some of the needs uh, that employers have in the way of uh, employee health and wellness. So the um, uh, survey was completed in May of 2012. There were 116 companies that did respond to that. Um, this is going to be difficult to see, so I apologize. But um, essentially, we did ask, uh, you know, one of the top or things we were asked to speak to today is what can small companies do in addition to what large companies are doing. Um, and we can see here that um, the majority of respondents in this survey did, in fact, have fewer than 50 employees. Um, so this is this was the statistic from how many people work in your entire company, so worldwide. Um, but then when asked how many people work in your company in Sheboygan County, um, in fact, 75% indicated, again, that they had fewer than 50 employees. So I want you just to, again, as I think Tammy pointed out, if you are a smaller company, a lot of this can still apply to you, and sometimes um, partnering with another organization is, is the way to make it happen. But um, so we recognize that there's a need for that. Um, additionally, we ask people to indicate their business classification. So, you know, what kind of organization are you? And we had really, a, um, I think, a great variety of manufacturing and services, healthcare, um, retail, finance. So just many different um, areas of industry that we were looking at in this survey. Um, then additionally, we asked folks, um, you know, what kind of tools and resources would be helpful to you? Um, you know, and, and so we received things, uh, information such as how to ev evaluate a wellness program, who's a person I can talk to for ideas, um, some sample letters, things like that. So as a committee, we took a look at, well, what kind of things do we use in our own programs? What kind of things uh, could we share with people? Um, and well, COA, I think, is a fantastic resource. There are other um, groups, such as the Nas National Wellness Institute, um, that has some great ideas. Um, but additionally, we also identified with um, the Wisconsin Worksite Wellness Toolkit, which is actually a kit that um, the SCAN committee has referred to for some time. Um, so essentially what this is, is that it is a no-cost resource available. You can go out to the website today and get some information on how to begin a wellness program, maybe how to revamp it, things like that. Um, this, they have a new version. Um, the, this is actually produced by the Wisconsin Department of Health Services. So they implemented a resource kit in 2010. Um, it's, actually, it's actually a second edition. They had revised it based on some feedback that they had in initially launching it and such. So it's a really great resource on what has been effective. Um, and you can see here too, you know, that some of the focus areas are reducing the risk factors to chronic disease, poor nutrition, inactivity, and tobacco use. Um, so what, what, what I'm also introducing is um, a training that we're going to be offering for no charge. Um, there's some sign-up sheets on, at your tables um, where you'll be able to learn um, You'll, you'll, you'll receive a step-by-step -step guide um, on how to assess your work site, identifying what types of activi activities to implement, and then links to information on how to implement and ways to determine effectiveness. So again, um, it's all out there on the website, but this will be a day for you to kind of walk through um, network. There will be an opportunity um, for you to ask for um, help, at, for a mentor, for someone who's currently has implemented what they've learned along the way. Some of the great companies that um, have already done it have a lot of insight. Um, and so additionally, at that time, if, you, if you're a company such as that, um, it's a great opportunity for you to come and, and speak with folks who are just starting out and such. So um, the trainer for that, um, 
program is coming up. Um, John Morgan is his name, and let me just get you his title here. Um, he's the physical activity coordinator for the Wisconsin Department of Health, and he will actually be uh, presenting this program in April. Um, he also provided a little bit, uh, a few statistics that I thought were interesting that I wanted to share with you today as well. Um, here is a statistic from the Harvard School of Public Health, a news, uh, news file for dollars and cents of chronic disease. Um, only $251 is spent per person on public health measures that prevent medical medical conditions before they occur versus 8086 that is spent on medical care uh, per person per year. So that's after the fact. So that's um, a ratio of 32 to 1 that we're spending on you know, the aftercare versus prevention. Um, so I thought that was a very interesting statistic. Um, additionally, um, and I think I think, Jean, you spoke a little bit about this as well, but, um, you know, basically a lot of the chronic disease that we're seeing, um, a lot of it has to do with the lifestyles that we're living. Um, the World, World Health Organization estimates that 80% of heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and 40% of cancer could be pre prevented if we could get Americans to stop smoking, to eat healthier, and to get in shape. So here's a fact which we have proven today by some of our pre previous speakers is that you can change behavior, um, you can reduce health risks, and it will reduce health care costs. A little bit on return on investment. Um, this is a study uh, from an issue brief in September of 2005 from the Wisconsin Public Health and Health Policy Institute. Um, there's lots of reports out on what, and as Tammy um, started off her talk to talk about um, health and wellness as being an investment. So, you know, the, the return on investment, 2 to $5 for every $1 spent is an average, um, you know, that is recognized in the industry. Again, uh, noting some of the things um, which I think, again, was previously noticed, such as absenteeism, absenteeism medical and pharmacy costs, presenteeism, um, workers' comp, and disability time. So again, this is just an invitation for you all to join us in April, uh, April 10th at Sargento in Plymouth, who is uh, kind enough to offer their venue for the training that will be happening. Um, and then Prevea and Aurora are also providing lunch. Uh, they've partnered to provide lunch, so that'll be a great opportunity. Hope to see you there. And then I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we're doing at Prevea um, under the umbrella of health and wellness with corporate groups. Um, and we kind of look at it as a pyramid, um, and we truly believe that the foundation of the health and wellness um, experience is education and awareness. Um, it's hard to know if you're not doing well if you don't know how you're doing, right? Um, fitness programming has been a great addition to our service offerings, um, as well as medical programming and then the on-site clinics, which you heard um, a bit about. I'll tell you about some of these programs as well. Um, although not a lot of detail on the on-site clinics. I knew Tammy would be covering that. Um, so we talk about what are some of the traditional often offerings that we've seen in the workplace, and we had things like occupational medicine, worker safety, ergonomic assessments, are you sitting at your computer correctly, um, productivity management, screenings and blood work, and health risk assessments. Some of the newer offerings, um, what we did at Purvey is we took a look at what we're doing in our clinics and asked what can we bring on site to the employer to make it more convenient um, to have that camaraderie with the employees and to be where they are for the majority of their day, or a good majority of the day. Um, so we, we developed um, in partnership with the Sports Corps, the um, on-site fitness programs, and I'll, I'll show you a success story that we had um, in addition to what some of the other folks had as well. Um, we're doing additional um, on-site medical screenings, the chronic disease programming. I'll talk a little bit more about lunch and learns, um, wellness consulting, nutrition services, and then the on-site health and wellness clinic. So, you know, for education, um, there's a lot of different resources and ways that you can um, get this to your employees. Again, the SCAN website is a great place. Wellco is a great place. Um, Purveya does actually also offer, you can, you know, sign up to be on our mailing list and receive some flyers and um, posters and things like that. And um, Lunch and Learns, we do come on site, uh, have our providers come out and speak on specific topics. Um, 
Wellness challenges is a really fun way to get education. Um, so doing things like when you do your biggest loser challenges and things like that to have, you know, emails that go out that give people information on why it's healthy to lose weight, things like that. It, it just makes it, um, if you're in a competition, sometimes makes education not really feel like education. Um, and then also having lunchroom displays where you're looking at maybe portion sizes or um, you know how, the amount of salt that you see in chicken nuggets and all kinds of um, good little tidbits that you get visuals from there. So um, here's just a statistic on a, a group we worked with, uh, Mayor Price Financial in Green Bay. Um, they participated in the Fit, Get Fit program, which again is a 12-week program. We come in and get your employees moving. You really don't need anything more than an empty conference room for us to come in to um, get you moving twice a week for an hour um, each day. And we'll bring in things um, that are easy to transport. So you can bring in things such as uh, your yoga mats, exercise balls, um, exercise bands, things like that. And we're going to get you moving. Um, and we see this over and over and over again, uh, the return on investment and uh, the accomplishments that these participants make. In this particular class, there were 12 participants that completed the initial testing and, and measurements. The group had a total weight loss of 81 pounds, an average weight loss um, of 6.75 pounds per person. The total inches lost were 78 inches, and again per person, the average inches lost was 6.5 inches. Average strength improvements in the upper body was 18.5%, um, in the core 34%, and lower body 63%. And it really is amazing, um, you know, to be at some of these um, post-evaluation um, events and to see people doubling how many push-ups they could do than, than they could do 12 weeks prior and things. So it, it's, it's very inspiring. Um, our medical programming is where we're, we're focusing more on um, really targeting individuals in a chronic disease state or in a pre-chronic disease state. So um, your pre-diabetics, um, folks with metabolic syndrome who are at a high risk for diabetes, um, stroke, um, heart attack. Um, it's really focusing on, again, education for these folks. They meet twice a week for 10 weeks. They receive education, and they're also getting fit. So we're getting them moving again twice a week. Um, we had done an initial, this was actually statistics from our pilot program, which is a couple of years old now, but we um, had 14 people screened. 11 of them actually qualified to be in the program. Um, and, and then it just tells a little bit about the program here. Um, they do set goals, their own goals, and try to meet them throughout. Um, so after 12, week, 12 weeks, again, the group lost a combined um, 85. This I, I know I was conflicting in that it's now a 10-week program. At this time, it was a 12-week program. So they lost a combined total of 85 pounds. They decreased their body mass index of 14.66 points. But more importantly, they changed the quality of their lives and invested in healthier lifestyles. Significant shift that they've made. They've actually, um, out of 211 employees who were over the five years, um, moved 50, uh, they used to have, um, let's see, 98 employees in the low category. Excuse me, that's wrong. They had, uh, I need my readers too here. 65? <laughs> Can anyone read 55? 55 in the low category, low risk. You want to be in low risk. They now have 98 individuals in the, in the low risk category. And they also shifted from having 102 people in the medium category to 80. I think a lot of them went to low. And they also reduced significantly. I can't read it here. I apologize. I don't have the numbers. Um, the, you can read it. Thank you. So uh, decrease the amount of people who, who have high risk. So yes, wellness programming does work. Find out what works for you. Um, you know, not, not every program is for everyone. Um, not everyone needs a Biggest Loser Challenge, but maybe they need um, some different ideas on, on how to be healthy and make small changes that make a big difference. So that's it. <laughs> And I know there are clinics that are up and running. Has there been any determination of whether businesses could be added, even as a group? Or Yes. Um, well, we actually are always open to learning of new ones in the Plymouth area. We've talked to some, um, because I've been in HR in this area for over 15 years, I know most of the HR folks. 
but generally what becomes an issue is the travel to Plymouth. They're concerned that their employees will not travel to Plymouth. So um, I, you may want to speak about some of the opportunities coming to the Sheboygan area, but um, th we are always more than open to talk to companies that might be interested in joining us. I mean, our, our um, smallest group, PTX, has 36 employees. Okay. So just to give you an example. Nice. And yeah, I would agree with that. We do have some Sheboygan employers who are working on a clinic. Um, we're hoping to open on July 1st. And so, um, you know, I think just talk to us or, or talk to each other, like Tammy said. Um, you know, we, we're happy to, to let you know what's happening. And um, or if you, if you are, you know, talking amongst yourselves with other employers, um, you know, bring us the opportunity and we can make the presentation. Thank you. Yeah. And an information meeting. It, absolutely. To bring what a chance to get in a chamber and talk about Absolutely. That's, sure, a, that's a really great so, idea. Right, mm -hmm. right. One thing I didn't touch on, which it may, may be a question that some of you have, is we basically take the number of employees that each company has in January and again in July, and that's the number that we use to prorate those fixed costs. And then um, each company pays their own medical costs. So as they are seen by the providers and incur the actual service charges, they get a separate bill from Prevea for that. So is that over and above your numbers that you showed per employee? No, or that's ours, the, the numbers yours. I shared had everything in it. Okay. All the fixed costs and all of the variable medical costs. Mm -hmm. And having included what the employee would pay when they went and saw that provider? Our employees do not pay anything, it's free of charge. That's an important point. Yes, so Master's Gallery yeah. pays yes. all of that. But there's some employers that probably have. Yes, they do. They do. Okay. Yeah. They do. Um, they do have a fee that um, that helps offset some of that cost right. for the employer, but also. Um, well, I say we can figure it out together. Right. Right. Absolutely. Don't Tammy, is your program the program um, the uh, the clinic that's in Plymouth is is it big enough feasible to have like a session out there where people, companies might be interested would come up go out there and hear more details, but also be able yes. to see what actually is out there. Sure. The we, um, we actually, when we have meetings there, yeah. we utilize the conference room that Provea has in that building. Right. So sure. I sure. Or even, you know, depending on the size of the room, we could use the physical therapy space. Yes. Yeah, I think okay. we could use it. Okay. To tour the facility. Yeah, I was just going to say, and don't forget about the April session on Worksite Wellness, because I think there'll be some dialogue there, too, mm -hmm. where you'll have the opportunity to speak with some individuals right, right. that have a program. And we'll promote that too. So, mm -hmm. right. I see Representative Hensley right behind you. Yeah, can I jump in just for a quick second? Yes. Um, hot off the press. Apologize, I was planning on being here, but I'm meeting at Two Rivers that run, ran late, so now I've got another one running late too. But based on the subject matter of today, um, there is a, uh, a bill out for co sponsorship that just came out. Um, in an effort to help produce a healthier, more productive workplace in Wisconsin, we're introducing the Healthy Jobs Act. Basically what it is, it's a tax uh, credit for small businesses if they uh, begin a wellness program uh, within their company. So what my normal modus operandi is when I get bills is I obviously read the bill first, um, then I do some research on it, and then I check with both sides. If there's a side that I think is pro and con, I check with both of them. I'm getting very positive feedback. but. What better way than to talk to you guys and maybe just by a show of hands, would you be in support of me voting for a bill that would offer a tax credit? Is it an income tax credit or a property in, tax in, credit or a sales tax credit? Income or, or franchise. What's that? In, income or franchise up to 30% of the cost. Okay. Small business, specifically small business on this bill. Any trade-offs? I think it's uh, some of the numbers that I caught when I first came in kind of jive with mine as far as what the payback is on a wellness program. So I don't see any downside, but it'd be good just to see what you all think. Manufacturers, are, you're phasing out the income tax for the manufacturers, so there's not even benefit for them? Uh, well, that's un undetermined yet, I guess. Okay. That, that has been talked about, and there's, we don't have an answer for that yet right. on the manufacturing side. Mm -hmm. okay. Sounds great. Great, thanks. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, I think we're... Uh, um, if any other questions, uh, I think the speakers might be available for questions afterwards or at their place of employment. So, again, I'd like to thank them all for uh, sharing some of these tidbits of knowledge. So.